Hi, my name is Jane Shaver, and this is my Contemporary Arts and Big Ideas presentation. Thank you for being here. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and get started. Okay, so as I said, this is my contemporary art and big idea presentation. So for my big idea, I have chosen to focus on the concept of self-identity. I was really drawn to the idea of using self-identity and exploring its complexities because I really believe that it's a topic that's very versatile, and very applicable in the world of our education. So by delving into the multifaceted concept of self-identity, my hope is to really provide students with a very powerful tool for unraveling the intricacies of their personal identity, as well as kind of gaining insight into the experiences of others. I chose to focus on mental health as my contemporary art issue because I think it very closely intertwines with my big idea of self-identity. Mental health encompasses the emotional, psychological, and social well-being of individuals, and it significantly influences how we perceive and define ourselves. So exploring mental health through contemporary art allows for a deeper examination of the relationship between mental health and self-identity. So by focusing on mental health as a contemporary art issue, my aim is to shed light on the complexities of self-identity in the context of mental well-being. So these are the contemporary artists that I'm going to be focusing on today. Tracy Emin is pictured on the left. She is a famed contemporary British artist, and she is known for her confessional artworks that reflect her personal identity. She explores themes of mental health by frequently depicting her personal struggles and expressing her raw emotions and vulnerability. Then we have Yeo Kasuma in the middle. She is a still practicing 94-year-old Japanese contemporary artist who suffers from depression and obsessive compulsive disorder. But instead of allowing her struggles with depression and obsessive behavior to hinder her, Kasuma courageously embraces them as sources of inspiration and channels them into her creative endeavors. Finally, here on the right, we have Jenny Seville. She is a Scottish contemporary artist known for consistently painting distorted women's bodies. Her work has played a really pivotal role in challenging conventional notions of beauty and the male perception of the female body, which has really provoked many of her viewers to question societal expectations, challenge conventional beauty standards, and take into consideration things like body dysmorphia and delve into the intricate interplay between self-identity and mental well-being. So if you want to check out my artist introductions, I have them here. You can go ahead and pause the presentation. So moving right along to my first artwork by Tracy Emin. This installation is called My Bed, and it's a very personal installation as it presents Emin's own bed as a metaphorical self-portrait. So through this installation, Emin is offering her viewers an intimate glimpse into her self-identity and very much revealing her personal struggles with depression after a breakup. So by presenting her unmade bed with personal items, including drained alcohol bottles, crumpled tissues, pregnancy tests, the like, Emin is building a portrait of herself. So, quote, the bed becomes a memory museum to a specific time and place in Emin's past, end quote. Smith et al. 2001. So this allows my bed to be seen as an exploration of self-identity and expression of the artist's emotional state. Overall, this artwork is connecting to my chosen big idea of self-identity by offering a very candid exploration of the artist's emotional state and contributes to the contemporary art issue mental health by really challenging societal taboos and dialogue surrounding the complexities of human emotions, um, what is presentable to show in the public, and kind of demonstrates the power of contemporary art as a vehicle for self-expression and introspection when it comes to self-identity and mental health. So next up, we have Yao Kasuma's Obliteration Room. This begins as a white space, which visitors are invited to cover with stickers. And then over the course of a few weeks, the room is just transformed from this blank slate. You can see um, in the right-hand corner at the top what it initially looks like into just this explosion of colorful with thousands of colorful round stickers just stuck on every available surface. So this interactive artwork actually serves as a reflection of Kasuma's experience with her hallucinations of endless dots just consuming her um, that stem from her mental illness, obsessive compulsive disorder. Um, so the act of placing countless dot stickers in the space was intended to symbolize the obsessive feeling she experienced of seeing the hundreds of dots and feeling as though she was being obliterated by them. 
Um, so engaging with this artwork, participants can kind of gain insight into this unique experience. So as a whole, Obliteration Room reflects Kasama's personal struggles with mental health and her quest for self-identity as she creates spaces that can be interpreted as an exploration of her own psyche and an attempt to find stability and meaning within her experiences. So then we have Jane Spill's Cindy. This is a larger than life oil painting that explores the theme of fictional normality, aligning with a common theme found in Spill's work of addressing the problem of experiencing oneself as disgusting. So basically, this painting is depicting a massive portrayal of a woman who has clearly undergone plastic surgery based off the bandages on her face. Um, so this is a very thought provoking representation because it's raising questions about the psychological motivations behind altering one's appearance and the concealed mental state associated with such procedures. So through her paintings, the bill is narrating kind of a very familiar story here of individuals who have fallen victim to societal beauty standards. So she actually expresses her fascination with cosmetic surgery patients and says they are what inspired this piece um, and talks about how they believe they were sick. And so I actually have a quote here from an interview with her um, that I read and quote, here was a certain egotistical side to the patients. The people who went there thought they were ill. They thought they were sick. And I was quite intrigued by the idea that if they went through this process, they could come out more natural than they were when they went in. So they had this idea in their head, this fiction of what their natural self should be. And the surgeon was going to help them reach that point. End quote. It goes the end 2018. So basically, Seville's reflection here is suggesting a very profound connection between mental health issues and self-perception. And so by expressing her fascination with patients who believe they were sick, she's really highlighting that cosmetic surgery patients' self-perception as sick was actually just a distorted self-image of their natural appearance. And these distortions are really common in mental health conditions like body dysmorphia, which manifest as an obsession of perceived physical flaws. So overall, this artwork is really connecting to my big idea of self-identity and the contemporary our issue of mental health because it's highlighting the impact of societal beauty standards on individuals' mental well-being and inviting viewers to really reflect on their own notions of self-image and the influence of mental health on personal identity. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and move into talking about my curriculum lesson activity ideas. So first, an art gallery walk. I've chosen a gallery walk as a learning activity for my students because I believe it is a really effective way to promote active engagement in student-centered learning. My focus is on student-centered learning because I think that self-identity and mental health are very highly personal topics, and each student is going to have very unique experiences, perspectives, and questions relating to those concepts. And so by adopting a student centered approach. I'm really hoping to just acknowledge those diverse backgrounds and needs of each and every one of my students. So my overall intention here is that this approach will help my students comprehend and connect the big idea of self-identity and the contemporary issue of mental health in relation to the artwork of Tracy Emin, Yo Kasuma, and Jane Seville in the most meaningful way possible. So through this activity of a gallery walk, my students will have the opportunity to observe, reflect, discuss, and respond to the artwork, fostering their critical thinking, collaboration, and just a deeper understanding of the topic. So the gallery walk method encourages active interaction with the artwork and among students and can be guided by the essential questions. Um, so overall, my students will be able to engage in a very comprehensive exploration that will serve as a meaningful introduction to my big idea, contemporary issue, and chosen artists and artworks. So just a great way to start out with an introduction to the artist. Um, so next up is my personal favorite, um, art journaling. I have done art journaling in little classes that I've taught in the past. And I just really love this as a reflection method for kids. I selected art journaling as my second learning activity for this because I think that it really just empowers students to take control of their own learning process because it's placing them at the center. So it becomes a very effective method for promoting reflection and student-centered learning. So my main focus is on student-centered learning again because topics like self-identity and mental health are highly personal and I think just really necessitate a personalized and meaningful approach. Um, so art journaling does this really well by providing students with a personalized way to reflect on the essential questions I have formulated for them so they can express their interpretations of the artworks um, and respond to them through their own sketches, writings, reflections. And this process just enables them to explore possible answers to the essential questions in their journal in their own way. 
and do it in a way that's giving them autonomy and ownership of their learning in a very personalized and meaningful format. So then it's also encouraging students to more authentically express their thoughts and emotions, which is going to prompt students to establish personal connections with the themes of self-identity and mental health. So it's really engaging them in the art journaling process. And so students are going to have more opportunity to derive a deeper meaning from the artists and the artworks in the gallery walk and relate to them in their own lives more because it's giving them a more profound sense of reflection and introspection. So next up is my line of inquiry research activity. I chose the line of inquiry research activity for my students because I think that it's a really effective way to promote a comprehensive understanding of the big idea of self-identity and the contemporary issue of mental health in a very learner-centered manner. Um, because this approach really encourages student-driven exploration. It allows them to delve into topics that genuinely interest them. So by giving students the freedom to explore what interests them about the artists, Emin, Kasuma, and Seville, students can kind of have the opportunity to investigate specific elements of their works, backgrounds, or influences related to self-identity and mental health that really spoke to them. Um, so they can be inspired by the essential questions and then kind of go off that and explore self-identity and mental health in connection to the artists and their works based on their personal personal interests and inclinations. So they may choose to conduct an in-depth study to better understand the relationship between mental health and self-identity, or they could focus on one or more of the artists to explore their connections to the broader themes of self-identity. The possibilities are honestly endless here, which is why I love it. There's so many benefits. There's so many possibilities of and the research activities really are endless. So it's a great way to engage students in active learning and deepen their understanding of self-identity and mental health concepts in a student-centered way. So lastly, I have collaborative artwork. Um, I chose a collaborative art project as a learning activity for my students because I think it's another really effective way to explore my big idea and contemporary art issues. And to facilitate this, I would divide the class into like three or more groups and then have each group focusing on one of the artists. And then they would be creating creating um, an artwork that's inspired by the artists that they're studying and their exploration of self-identity and mental health. And I think that this project is really just going to offer a very excellent learning opportunity because it actively involves students in the creation process and allows them to contribute their ideas, skills, and perspectives. Um, and it's just promoting a very more personalized and meaningful learning experience for them. So throughout the creative process, students will be having the freedom to interpret their assigned artist's work and express their understanding through collaborative artwork. Um, which is just going to really push them to take ownership of what they're doing. But I also think that the collaboration here is particularly really important um, because the collaboration is ultimately going to deepen their understanding of the big idea of self-identity and mental health um, because I think that collaboration can be beneficial to student learning when it's about self-identity and mental health because the collaboration can help to foster a sense of community and empathy and understanding because students are sharing their diverse perspectives with one another as they're trying to figure out um, how they want to create this artwork and then they're going to learn from each other's experiences as they share these perspectives which is ultimately just going to promote a much deeper understanding of self-identity and mental health because the students can then gain a more unique insight from their peers viewpoints okay so justification of my teaching method and learning activity choices. So overall, I chose to use a learner-centered approach to teach my students about the big idea of self-identity and the contemporary art issue of mental health, because I think that these topics are really personal, as I mentioned earlier. You know, I talked about earlier how every student is going to have unique experiences, perspectives, and questions um, related to these subjects. So by adopting a learner-centered approach, my intention is to demonstrate that I value and respect their diverse backgrounds. Um, and potentially sensitive histories with these topics. So through a learner-centered approach, I'm aiming to very actively involve my students in the learning process, allowing them to participate and engage in a way that's going to be meaningful to them. And I want to just create an environment where their thoughts, reflections, and experiences are acknowledged and appreciated and ensuring that everyone feels seen and heard. So I think that this approach helps to do that and fosters a sense of ownership and empowerment while enabling students to share their perspective and connect their personal experiences to the subject matter and just deepen their understanding and relevance to the topic. Um, and the activities I've chosen, such as the gallery walk, the art journal, the line of inquiry, and the collaboration art project, I think that these all really well align with the learner-centered approach because each activity values student voices, experiences, and perspectives, and provides them with a very personalized and meaningful way for them to contribute to the class. So by incorporating 
incorporating these activities, I aim to create a classroom environment where students feel encouraged to share their thoughts, collaborate with others, and just actively construct their knowledge. And overall, I just justify my learner-centered approach and choice of activities based on their ability to foster a sense of empowerment, promote deeper learning, and support the overall growth and development of my students. So by putting the students at the center of their own learning, I'm aiming to create an inclusive and engaging educational experience that nurtures their understanding of self-identity and mental health so that we can have a very productive and fulfilling learning experience together. So I have my essential questions here that you can go ahead and check out. I would go ahead and pause the presentation. So I'll flip through these. I have them um, based off of anchor standards one through 11. Here's the next set, the next set, and the next set. This is the last set. Go ahead and pause and read. Um, and then I have my references here at the end of the presentation. Again, you're welcome to pause and read them. And that is the end of my presentation. Thank you so much for your time. Um, I'm excited to hear feedback. Um, yeah, thank you so much. And have a great rest of your day or night. Bye-bye.